let's look at this explosion slash fireball effect. A lot of people were asking me, how do you create these gasoline explosions? And especially in the beginning, uh, you can see nothing ignites except at frame 13 or 10. We start igniting temperature and then everything lifts. So this is imitating a scenario where you would um, emit a lot of gas, gasoline particles into the air and then wait a few seconds before the actual ignition starts and then you have combustion and everything lifts up in the air. Let's take a look how this was done. I will break it down step by step. So first, this is how the emitter looks like. And you can see the emitter almost kind of repeats. So the second time it goes, that's where we are sourcing in our temperature. And we are sourcing in our temperature through influence temperature here. I'm retiming it here just a bit so we get that nice kick in the beginning. And then this is how the actual simulation looks like. Now this is simulating it live right now. It looks pretty good. And this is how the pyro bake volume looks like. You can see we are igniting with a bit of a delay. All right, what we are doing here is using the combustion. You can see I'm burning everything as soon as my temperature gets into the system. So as soon as the second emitter comes in, everything will burn up super fast and there will be a 10% of inefficiency. Then I'm putting in a lot of temperature, a bit of pressure and a bit of density. On the sourcing side, like I said, everything is coming. The temperature here is set to zero and my actual temperature, temperature is coming in as an influence field. So I'm setting this to three. On the simulation side or on the on the force side, I am using turbulences, but I'm setting them to temperature as their scale field. So you can see in the beginning as when this happens, when we get the first um, liftoff, there is no turbulence acting because we don't have any temperature. They only start disturbing here when temperature starts, uh, when the combustion starts. If we don't source any temperature, I haven't tried this. I don't know how it's going to look like, but yeah, this is without sourcing temperature. You can see we don't get any turbulences uh, working and it looks quite pathetic, <laughs> like a little smoke puff. But with temperature, let's put it to four. It's going to ignite and everything's going to lift off. Awesome. The trick here is actually in the emitter. Like I said before, the pyro burst source is good for a lot of things, but if you really want to get some tasty explosions, then you need to create your own emitter. So you have full controllability and you can see we're getting those nice strands and uh, the forces are going to be nice and the dissipations are going to be quite organic as well. Now I have a simple grain submitter. This is the base. This is the ultimate simple grain submitter by Urban Verdesco. Hey, it's me. Sorry for interrupting, but it would mean a lot to us just now if you would leave a comment or like the video. It just helps with the algorithm. You can type anything. You can type Axiom, what's your name, what city you're from. It will help people find this workshop. And if you're truly getting value from this video, consider subscribing. All right. Uh, this is what I use as a base for all of my emitters for a few years now. I switched from an RBD based system to a grains system. Uh, you can still use both. I will show that in a later uh, workshop where we go through uh, an advanced system. But for now, I am giving you the simple system for you to use. So how does this work? You create a simple shape. We add some velocity to it. It's quite small, actually, this velocity. I'm sure I'm multiplying it down here. Yeah. 
we add some velocity so you can see I can add I can add zero velocity and that will just take the velocity coming from my source or I can start adding some additional velocity to push everything up and then we can also, also multiply it here. The shaping is happening uh, through a few different ways. So I'm just applying two turbulences together and the actual shape is coming from this dot product here. So if you really want everything to just go up, you can reduce this even more. Or if you want more omnidirectional, then you can do this. But for our purposes, I think it was something like this. Scaling it down. I won't go through the whole setup because uh, I will give you uh, the hip file so you can check it out for yourself. But just a few more areas to explain, I guess. This part is where we set our attraction weight. Everything that is white is going to stick together more. Everything that's black is going to spray out. And this will, again, give us an organic emitter. And you, with this, you can also emulate the gas particulates in the air. Setting a mass here, just a random mass, and then you do the simulation. It's going to look something like this. And you can see the sim is pretty fast. So you get some clumping, you get some nice um, singular particulates like that. Like I said, it's going to be very organic. If you want, you can use the glue constraints here. It will give you even more organic shapes. It's going to kind of feel like a flip sim, honestly, with the glue. So looks pretty good. I like it. Actually, I like this one more than uh, without the glue. So you can use that. We cache everything here, and then I'm removing the bottom particles from the sim. Removing them here, or actually I'm just tagging them here, uh, and then I'm removing them so they're never in the sim in the first place. They were just giving me some negative velocities when they fall down here, so I was getting some pluming, but because I just wanted this to be an upwards explosion, uh, I removed them. So here we have the three strands. The left part is the left part. We are sourcing in density, temperature, V and pressure. Think of it as this is my base emitter. These are the influence velocity forces and this is the temperature, influence temperature. So what we are doing here is I'm um, trailing the source so we get these strands, uh, this will help with the sub-stepping. If you only have, uh, em if your emitter only has chunks like this, you're gonna have to increase the sub-steps quite a lot in the sim. It's gonna get slower. It's gonna behave a bit more. Uh, it's gonna behave differently. So this is a trick to get to remove the sub-steps for fast-moving objects. All the usual suspects, density, temperature, V, we cache it, uh, renaming everything. So blasting, renaming V to influence well, renaming density to fuel, renaming density to influence, like we did a million times by now. So that's what we get. Animating the density one last time, just so it, it's a more smooth transition. Retiming it so we get that kick and then animating it here so we get even more of that kick. So you can see how poppy that is. Poof. On the left, we have, like I said, the usual basic emitters. And then here on the right is where we source our influence temperature. So everything's the same, except we have our temperature. We rename it to influence temperature and our influence. And then this is the same. We merge everything and that creates our final simple emitter. That's how it looks. That's how it uh, looks like. You can uh, grab this file and play around with the emitter. And that's pretty much it. You then cache it. Another retime to make it even more explosive. And then we simulate. Looks pretty good, quite fast, and uh, 
yeah, I like it. All right, let's move on to the next video.